So good afternoon again and a warm welcome. You are watching the Supreme Pool Series event number one. This is a Jason Owen Open and um, you've just seen the player shake hands. On the right hand side, Chris Melling on the left hand side, Seb Webb. What an exciting game this is in prospect. I'm joined in the commentary by Greg Batten. What do you think of this one, Greg? Two attacking open players. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Yeah, this promises to be a fantastic match. You've got, uh, without doubt, the overall best uh, Q-sport player in the world, multiple uh, sport player in Chris Mellin, very attacking player, and you've also got Seb Webb, who's nicknamed himself the most electrifying man in pool, so yeah, yeah. promises to be a fantastic match. And uh, as I mentioned in the intro, um, two very, very open players, so attacking, um, probably you know two of the most attacking players in the room. And they meet each other in round number one. And in all honesty, um, I can't call a winner. Um, you know, I'm guessing. I haven't looked at the prices, but I'm guessing that uh, that Chris is a favourite. But but Seb can reel off frames as well. So yeah, it's one of those. I mean, with the bookies, you'd imagine Chris is, Chris is the massive, you know, big favourite, just based on his reputation, what he's done in the game, and everything else. But. Seb has proved that he's uh, he can go deep in these sort of competitions, and uh, he's he's done well at, at players before. So you, know, you never know what can happen. It all depends, I think, who gets off to a good start. So if you um, if you're not already aware, if you're recently joining us, um, you can follow all of the scores by looking up uh, qscore.com. And uh, if you search for the Jason Owen Open, you get all of the live updates. All the players have got a little uh, contraption, a little um, kind of iPad next to the next to the table, in which it's a live feed through the Q score. So all of the scores you see are um, up to date and real time. Did you catch any of the last match, Carla Donahue? Oh, wow! It was just an unbelievable oh, match. Wasn't goodness it? me. Unbelievable. He had no right to come back into that game. He wasn't queuing the ball well. He was losing the white ball all over the place. And then suddenly, um, well, he just came right back into it, didn't he? And yeah, fantastic match and a great ending as well. And shame, obviously, after all that work, all that coming back, and he, he lost the decider. But uh, as we see Chris doing what he does best, oh, he's overhit it. Yeah, he's yeah, in off. Wow. And the first frame can always sort of set the tone for these matches. So um, Seba would, would have been expecting Chris to clear up there, but he hasn't. So that will give him confidence. So as we mentioned at the table, Seb Webb, he's 32 years of age. Uh, he is His nickname is Mr. Electrifying, as we already mentioned. He's not messing about either. He's just getting down and hitting them. Started playing pool around about 1996, and he will take no time at all. Really fast attacking, aggressive player. And it looks like he's <laughs> he's found the um, the pace of this table really early. Oh, look at this for a clearance. He's done these in about three seconds. When asked about his feelings and anticipations for the Supreme Pool Series, very excited to see all the top players going head to head. And uh, his opponent um, barely needs any introduction. It's Chris Melling, he's 39 years of age. He, uh, what hasn't he done? Yeah, who in the question who made your cue? No idea. Which is well, okay. I like that. That's a bit like Ronnie O'Sullivan said. It's just a bit of wood. Yeah, yeah. But and uh, his achievements. Well, they're just too many to list. But uh, world eight ball champion times two, world masters eight ball champion times two, international masters champion, European masters champion. World Junior Champion. The list just goes on and on. If you want to see any of these um, player profiles, you can see them on the um, playerspoolevents.com website. And you'll also see the link to all of the streams. There are four games being streamed. Uh, we can keep you up to date with um, all the games as they happen. Uh, 
I'm taking it. Darren McVicker's game finished it at that must have. Yeah, I think Darren lost, unfortunately, lost. for his supporters. He was 4-1 uh, up as well, didn't he? Yeah. And Jamie Graham, who was 1-10 to 10 before his match started against Michael Snow, he's 10 frames to 6 down. Yeah. Chris Manning started playing pool at the age of three. When his parents bought him a small table. At the age of nine, his dad took him to the local pub and it all started there for him. He began playing snooker when his neighbor took him to the local snooker club. At the age of 10 and by 12, he'd made his first century break. It's always been a natural, as you mentioned earlier, natural. Not nicknamed the magician for uh, any other reason than he is it's like a wand in his hand yeah he's one of those players that when he gets going he just makes it look ridiculously easy always got the white on a bit of string great shot maker and he just goes about it quietly doesn't he played a nice shot there got into an area Probably want to play this uh, red that he's playing now and just maybe a little cannon into the two yellows. Yeah, he's controlled that well. I think you'll see him play the red into the middle now, a little screw back, leave himself an angle, then the opposite red into the middle and try and cannon the yellow that's closest to the black. That then frees up the black into all pockets. Let's go in a different route. I just didn't quite have the angle. Has he come just a, a touch low? I think he's still okay. I think he's okay. Just off, off the top cushion and back onto the red. He's got a bit of a big bounce off that back cushion, but he's he's okay. And you get to see his his. Beautiful cue action, so just such a long, long backswing. No matter what shot he's playing, gentle shots, hard shots, he's just got that wonderful long backswing with the pulls yeah. and the delivery. I've been honing that for years across all kinds of different disciplines. And my God, he, he just jumps from one discipline to another. He was in China just a few weeks ago playing Chinese, and then he was across playing. Darren Appleton's World Pool Series just uh, last week, I think, or the week before. He's clocked up some air miles. Oh, he does. Well, his first two frames in the blink of an eye, Nick. It's, uh, it's yeah, good to watch, isn't it? Could it? be some fireworks in this one. Have you had a chance to play on the tables yet? No, I didn't. I got I arrived late last night, so not had a, a knock yet, but they, they look beautiful, to be fair. Running really well. I think everyone I've spoke to has been really positive about the, the new rack as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've seen it performing really well throughout the day. <coughs> you see uh, one ball just sat on the front of the rack. We did mention earlier, it's, uh, I think, personally, always better. I mean, Chris using his experience there. He's, um, he would have used these racks many, many times before. So he's just using his experience and um, asking for the ref to remove it immediately. Where we saw in the last game um, between Carl and Sean, they kind of left it on the table and then asked the ref to take it off much, much deeper into the frame when it started affecting... Um, what they, you know, the shots they'd be playing, and then it's kind of a natural break in in um, concentration yeah, there as well, and your rhythm. Point. No, that's a really good point. Whereas um, if you take it off early, you also 
buy yourself a few extra seconds as well to, to look at your pattern while, while you're not on the clock. Yeah, that's a great point, actually. But also, it's not in your mind at all then, is it? It's yeah. off the table. It's yeah. Subconsciously, it can actually be detrimental if it's still on the table, like you said, and you're, you know, you're getting through your break, and then you've got to stop again. To so it's still just a little bit awkward for Chris, but... Uh It'd be good to see how he goes about these. Just going to play a little cannon into the yellow. Beautiful. That's a great show. You can just screw this one back now. Leave the red into the opposite pocket and he's on the black. I mean, that looked awkward and it's just made it look so easy in close, close cue ball control. It's brilliant. Lovely stuff. It really is. Super from Chris Manning. He takes, a fr uh, takes the lead at two frames to one. Jamie Graham's still battling away there. He's uh, now 10 frames to seven. Dean Richardson and Bash Maksud, who's um, there's really been nothing in that match all the way through. They're locked up. It's a hill, hill game. It's 10 frames apiece. So Seb with his ever familiar hat on his head. Rarely plays without it. He's played a good shot there. Just needs to work these out. Looking to see if that plants. Lovely shot. That's a great shot. Lovely shot. He's gone from what looked like a, a slightly awkward clearance to making it look very, very simple again. And um, the couple of opportunities that, that Seb's had to come to the table, really impressive. Yeah, it's been uh, quick fire stuff. Yeah. Isn't it? Great standard. Nothing between them, two frames apiece. Neil Raybone went through against Craig Waddingham, 11 frames to nine. Yeah, that was some match as well. You know, all of these matches could be finals on any day, Nick, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah. The standard is so high. <coughs> so two each in about uh, six minutes. Chris to break. job they've done, uh, Lee Kendall and his team with the uh, arena by the way and the table, absolutely fantastic yeah, yeah it looks uh, it looks incredible, I mean it would rival 
any event. I mean, um, as good as as good as the kind of arenas we see in the in the snooker world, isn't it? It's, yeah. And it's great for the for the spectators as well. They can they can sit around the table. You can see them lining up, watching Chris play. What a break! Just park the white. <laughs> now the refs gonna have a bit more fun. Yeah. With getting this one off the table. There's only actually one ball on the um, on the rack. I think the the yellow and the black are inside it, and Chris just doing the ref a favour and letting it stay on the table. Yeah, it may be that um, he doesn't actually need to get anything moved, and that if the black goes into the left hand middle pocket, um, he, he might be fine in it. But we'll see. I think a few people were saying earlier, as long as you play them firm over the rack, you're okay. It's the minute you've got to try and sort of Just play a dead weight. Yeah, you know? yeah. And there's not many shots we play dead weight, is there? Yeah. Really? This is incredible standard. <laughs> That's amazing. And Chris not phased in the slightest by having the shark rack sheet on the table and uh, showing it to. You got people uh, watching, just laughing at how good this is. I know. Yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I mean, you can't you can't say enough about it. Okay, I can hear in the background all of the um, all the other games being called to table. So. Uh, also in action in this round, off and Dad against Dan Davey. I just heard that one being called. Um, remember, we are streaming four tables. So um, you've got your choice of games. Sanjay Patel's in action. Sanjay uh, plays and works out of the, the Savannah Club. He's playing Daniel Bishop. Uh, Sam Bircher playing Leah Boomer. Mark Farnsworth in action comes in against Mark Fleming. Mike King, he's playing in this round against Radaran Himamu. I take it he's one of the Moroccan qualifiers. I think he is, yeah, I think so. Sean Story playing Kevin George. Jimmy Croxon against Christy Colfield. Mandeep Jinger against Toby Bolt. John Rowe against Gareth Higgins. And uh, Scott Gillespie, Mark Asprey, and also another game just popped in there, which is going to be streamed on our second commentary table, which is between Gary Clark from Ireland and Craig Lakin. It's going to be another great game. Yeah. So the rest been fairly busy already this match. He has. We haven't seen um, many balls having to be having to be, mar be marked in the. Uh, in the previous matches, a couple of balls just come into rest. It just takes a few seconds. Like I say, it's a kind of natural break for the player to work out his pattern. It doesn't take too long. Yeah, and like you said earlier, it actually gives the player a, a, a chance to sort of weigh up everything, doesn't it? And uh, work out what he's going to do. I asked the refs what they think, and they said, yes, yeah, no, no problem. You know, some few of the players are <coughs> just having a bit more of a problem with it but um, only because they don't really know how to set them up where these guys are, and they're absolutely used to it. So Yeah, I think they probably it's enjoy just, it, to yeah, be honest. It's yeah. something different, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's just one of those um, new developments that people eventually get used to. And this is another great opportunity for, for Seb, and it's just been an absolute dish fest so far. Yeah, Seb just needs to be careful about how he goes about these. That's the right shot, I think. Clearing yeah, out yeah. this awkward red. So just play a little cannon to the yellow and then work his way back up the table. It's nicely done. Played that well. I think they both play similar speed as well, don't they? They really it's incredible. do. I don't know who's quicker. I would imagine that, um, you know, Chris has played many, many opponents across the years, but I doubt he's um, played too many players that are as attacking and as quick as as um, Seb. And it's um pretty flawless pool at the moment, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. We brilliant have been stuff. treated on this arena table. They've um 
well, these the, these games were were voted for. They were picked by by you, the fans at home. So um, you've picked really well so far. Absolutely incredible. Two hill hill matches. Really competitive. So across on one of our other stream tables is uh, currently Jordan Church against Lee Clough, which has just started. That one's still nil-nil. The Tower in action against Jordan Church, another phenomenal player. Yeah, should be a great match, that one. A big break, but uh, all the balls sort of congregated towards the left-hand side. Um, sort of what happens on a cut break sometimes, Nick. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah. We mentioned that earlier on commentary. A few players have been trying the cut breaks. In fact, in the first match um, with Clint Ironson and Darren Appleton, it was uh, they were almost taking it in turns to decide which break they. They were trying the cut, and then they tried the front ball, and so on and so forth. And it was both were effective. Have you seen uh, a sort of spate of dry breaks at all in any of the matches so far? Like consecutive dries, and was no. it up now? No, they're breaking yeah. really well, aren't they? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there we are. That was a bit of a first real loose one from from Chris. He missed that by. Some margin. Not massive damage, though, where no. the yellows are positioned, you'd think. Could be our first tactical frame. Like Jamie Graham has pulled another one back. He has, yeah, he's making a, a comeback now. So, <clears throat> I don't know Michael Steele. No, I've, I've actually never heard of him. But, uh, Rob Chilton knew him. He said, uh, you know, he's pretty, pretty decent stick. Well, I mean, it must be to, I think he was 9 2 up. Was he playing? Yeah. Great pop. Great opener by Chris. And he's actually freed everything up, Nick, here, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. One shot. So you see Cushion first. Controlled it very, very well. Such a good touch player, and that shot was all about the touch. Absolutely perfect. Realise that um, as the afternoon wears on, more people will be joining us. Well, there's a miss. Goodness me. Wow. What happened there? Chris uh, looking a bit miffed and smiled on his face. I don't know whether that one... I didn't actually watch it. I was. Can we get a replay of it at all? Yeah. Did we catch up? No, I didn't. Paul's uh, busy in conversation with Mr. Kendall at the moment, so... <coughs> there are some... Heavy finger marks, as you uh, you can see in that um, left-hand pocket. So, caught one of those fingers. He did play it a, 
I actually looked away because you, yeah. they, they've not missed a ball, so I didn't expect that one to yeah. be anything different. But yeah, as I was saying, realise that people are joining us as the afternoon goes on. Um, so let you know that we're watching the Supreme Pool series from Newcastle under Lyme. which is Lee Kendall's club. He's the organizer of this event. It's a series of uh, five tournaments throughout the year. They culminate in the grand final, which is on the 28th of November, I believe, 28th or 29th of November. It's a bit of a prize pot as well, I think, isn't it? It but certainly is, yeah. The um, the prize, I did mention during the last commentary, but as I say, I know people are, are joining us all through the day, so um, the prize is £51,000. It's actually a, a £5,000 first prize and 46000 bonus. Um, so you have to um, play in three of the first four events to qualify. And 51,000 being significant because um, it's the um, biggest prize pool in pool history. Or, the, sorry, the biggest first prize in pool history, should I say. Yeah. So, Seb may be able to cut this in and leave himself an angle. Maybe he's played it with too much check size. He has, yeah. Yep. It's going to take a really good shot now. He's going to have to load this one up. Can he play this with um, with a lot of right-hand side or is yep. it just too great an angle? No, he, he could. Um, he's, uh, he may get a bit of slide, obviously, off the new table, but... It's it's about bad. where he was queuing. Yeah. It's, um, if he, he just got to hit this right, yeah. it will hug the cushion if he hits it right. But uh, this is the first real bit of pressure. Yeah. On uh, on Seb. Big test. That's and that's it. no good. No. And he's left Chris Plum on his uh, one tricky ball. which uh, wasn't too tricky. Jamie Graham has pulled another one back. 10-9. Be interesting to see how that game's, how the momentum swung in that, but Jamie with the momentum with him now. and uh, He was 9-3 down, wasn't he? Yeah. Yep. The same as uh, Carlo Donahue. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if it goes 10 or whether he, he can actually win the decider. Let's wait and see. So, a pretty simple clearance there from Chris, but he makes it, and uh, he now leads four frames to three. Camera just panning around the arena, giving the uh, people watching at home an opportunity to see what a brilliant job they've done. And uh, this is the main arena table. And, uh, there's three other stream tables in the, uh, the second arena. So 4-3 to Chris Melling, Seb Webb to break. These come up dry. That is the first dry break of the match. I think we'll see Chris uh, take reds here. Uh, 
the uh, red on the left hand side cushion will uh, go in off the yellow that it's closest to so he just needs to uh, map his route barring anything uh, going wrong it should be 5-3 to Chris Chris will just take these uh, three reds together. Work his way back up the table. Just needs to land reasonably straight on this penultimate red. Doesn't want to be too far either way. He's landed a bit low. Makes the uh, shot a little bit harder as he wanted to be. He wanted to be able to hold it for red in the middle. Let's see what he does. So he's uh, deliberately left this last red into the. Uh, same pocket. Played it nicely. And very nicely cued. So the black to follow. And uh, as we expected, nice clearance from Chris. And he's 5 3 up. Off and Dad is 1 0 up against Dan Davy. Sanjay Patel is currently 2 1 up against Daniel Bishop. Sam Bircher is uh, leading Leo Bumra 1 0. Mark Farnsworth 1 0 up against Mark Fleming. Jimmy Croxton is 2 0 up against uh, Christy Caulfield. John Rowe one each with Gareth Higgins. Craig Lakin and Gary Clark one each. And Scott Gillespie against Mark Asprey. He's 1 0 up. So, uh, this game has uh, already had eight frames played. <laughs> and the rest, uh, the rest of the matches are uh, on two or three frames. So it just shows you how quick these guys play. Chris to break. Massive break there, but uh, it's come up dry. Hasn't left anything particularly easy though, but at first glance. So going for yellows. All of that side that he was imparting, unfortunately, has forced the error. And uh, he's left a, a really good chance now for Chris. I would imagine... Uh, I would imagine Chris will look to go yellows, but... Uh, Gone, gone red instead, and that's a really good shot. He's uh, he's on his awkward red straight away. 
may have a natural angle to come off the bottom cushion and uh, cannon into the other awkward red if he wants to. Perhaps didn't think he had the angle, changed his mind. He'll be going for this uh, straight red now, down to the left hand. Oh no, he's going for the red into the middle. He's back to the straight red that I mentioned. Cues the ball so well. Absolutely pump that one in. Just needs to keep tight control of the cue ball now, take this finish out. It's nicely done. Just come far enough that he can cue this one without jacking up over the yellow. So just one more good shot now. And that's perfect. So in no time at all. Chris Melling is now six, fr six frames to three up. Jamie Graham is still 10-9 down against Michael Steele. Obviously, for anyone at home that wants to go to, uh, to look at all of the uh, results, just uh, go on to qscore.com. Supreme Pool Series Event 1 and you can see what's going on. Uh, Seb Webb to break in the next frame and he'll be uh, anxious to hit straight back doesn't want to go too many behind against someone of Chris's class but unfortunately he's come up dry again and uh Well, either, either set looked good, to be honest. Chris selecting to go reds. Immediately, he's played a, a really nice shot so that he can develop the two slightly awkward reds into potable positions.
Chris uh, just working out where he needs the white ball to be. May elect to uh, play the red that he's closest to. Either go through the gap or play the cannon on the yellow. And, uh, well, I thought that was quite what he, he wanted. Wanted to be on the uh, the red into the bottom right hand pocket. Still got options here though. He could play uh, could play this red at the bottom black spot cushion and cut it in. That's a great shot. Oh, he's just been very unlucky. Very unlucky. <coughs> Didn't really have much idea where the white ball was going off of that red though, so... Uh, in that one shot, Seb has now regained control of the frame. Let's see what Chris can come up with here. That's a fantastic shot, dead weight. But he's gonna need another couple now if he's gonna keep this going. So I think what he's looking at is playing the red on the side cushion with loads of top spin, so that the uh, the white arcs off the cushion into the yellow that's closest to his other red. That's the only way he's going to uh, get on it. Let's see how he plays it. This would be some shot from the magician. Oh pot as well but actually as it's worked out the red now either goes well it definitely goes into the the right middle but uh he's gonna do really well to get on that black really well indeed yeah yellow's lying right in the path isn't it mm. i think he was trying to play my shot i mentioned nick yeah lots of top spin but obviously caught the yellow just slightly before the red yeah ampered queuing as well it's most most full players wouldn't wouldn't be able to play that shot though, you know, it's just the confidence he's got in his yeah. queuing is unreal. Yeah, he can make that cue ball dance sometimes, there's not much that he can't do. Oh. So a decent decent chance for uh, for Seb here to put himself back into the game. Yeah, he's not He's not going to miss these with two shots, I wouldn't have thought. So uh, yeah, he'll be very pleased if he can just pull this one back, keeps him in contact. You know, four behind is massive against uh, Chris, first to 11, whereas 6-4, he's still in the game. Yeah. So just a, a bit about the series, Greg. I mean, <clears throat> obviously two events of World Rules, two events of Black Ball, and then the Supreme Rules uh, for the for the grand final. You've played um, in, in the EPA Tour. You've played on the IPA Tour. So you've had a, a, a taste a foot in both camps. Um, just just explain a bit about what it means. I mean, we've got the, 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 the tagline spread. There's a, a great view of it there when two worlds collide. And it, and, and it really is. I mean, this is just bringing the two worlds together, isn't it? Yeah, it's just giving... Um every pool player, no matter what rule set they play, the opportunity to play in uh, one unified series. Yeah. And, um, well, you only have to look at the, the matches that have been played this morning alone to see what a fantastic uh, thing it is, you know, because yeah. it brings the very best players from both rule sets together, which can only be, which can only mean a, a, a fantastic spectacle for the people watching at home, as, you, as is proven already. And do you know the other thing that... Um, that obviously gets mentioned time and time again is, you know, this rule set is better than that. Now, I think this series as well, it kind of puts all that nonsense to bed because we've watched 52 frames on this stream table so far. We've seen one deliberate foul by Darren Appleton earlier on. Um, barely a tactical frame amongst them. Um, they're just but relevant that's, at this level, aren't that's they? That's the exact point. At the end of the day, when you get to this level, 
you rarely see a tactical frame and um, you know most most of the frames I've seen this morning have all been open it's all attacking um, you know and yeah you might get the odd frame that's tactical but that's what well, there's nothing wrong with that that's, yeah. that's the way it should be yeah. and um, it, it, it's a mixture of both both uh, players abilities you know the, the tactical players they get their chance in the odd frame to showcase their skills whereas the the open players you know they're getting frame after frame to try and pot the balls and, and do what they do best so yeah and of course uh, the last event as we uh, as we mentioned uh, the supreme rules um, I mean I know a lot of people won't won't be okay with them we're not going to start going into you know what those rules are if you want to look them up they are on the um, on the players um, pool series on the players pool events page so you can you can take a look at those those rules they've been devised by a group of players and they're a bit of a mix there's a bit of black ball there's a bit of world rules and there's a bit of uh, of Chinese in there as well yeah and um, the, the thing about them they're just uber attacking aren't they I mean there's, there's just not a, you, can, you just can't play defensive no, because exactly. if you cover a bag it punishes you, and it, yeah, it punishes yeah. you for for missing. It's um, mm. yeah, it's uh, it's just again. I think it's evolving and trying to make things keep things interesting, keep things yeah. moving, and yeah. Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I think I, I put up a post yesterday saying it was a, a a bit of a you know Paul was moving to a to a new era with this series. I'm not saying it's it's greater than anything else. It's just a new era. It's just. Um, it's just putting a new aspect on the game, yeah. which um, is exciting for everyone involved. I think um, I think there's great merits for, for for you know the other tours that that are currently being run. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's just great for pool players because it gives them another option, another event, and that's ultimately what everyone's looking for. Yeah. They just want to play pool, don't they? So. Yeah. Yep. And these um, these series, I mean, what a buzz! Social media has just been just been exploding over the last well six months really um yeah, it's been such a build-up hasn't it it and, has uh, it been has. worth the wait yeah, yeah. Well, i literally um i went to bed last night thinking i'll get an early night because i've got to drive up here and um i couldn't sleep yeah. i probably got to sleep about 1 a.m and i was awake at four yeah, you and i was just buzzing again i just I, you certainly wouldn't have been one of the only one that had been similar for for most players i think so mm -hmm. certainly it was for me So a massive break from Chris and uh, a routine finish for him. Keeps his nose clear, three three ahead, so that's 7-4 now. I think there's been one or two balls missed in the whole game. Yeah. What yeah. a standard it's been. It's amazing how some of these games have flowed actually today. The first the first one was just nip and tuck all the way through and um, it just the, the, the standard just accelerated. It just got better and better as, as it went on. The second game of course, um, Sean Chipperfield flew out into the into the lead against Carlo Donoghue. He was nine frames to three up at one point, and um, Carl. Well, for, for for the world, it looked like uh, it was game over. But then he started to show some of the form that we know he he can he can produce, and he came back into that one. It was another hill hill game. So it's now um, up to Seb to, to fight this absolute man mountain in, in Chris Melling. Yeah, it's going to be tough because, as you've already seen, Chris doesn't miss, or he very rarely misses. So uh, once he gets his nose in front, it's a big ass to then come back, and especially when he breaks as well as he does. Mark Farnsworth tied up at two apiece against Mark Fleming. I've got a feeling... No, maybe it wasn't. I was going to say there was a bit of... I thought there was a bit of um, um, bad blood between those two, but it wasn't those two. I saw something going off on social media, but it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't those two. I'm trying to put something in where it wasn't there, but I thought there was a bit of needle. But two great opponents, Mark Fleming. Am I right in thinking was he the Fleming brother who just came away with the European title? Am I uh, right in yeah, thinking I th that? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so current um, European champion playing Mark Fiennes were there. They're locked together at two apiece. That's going to be a that's going to be a great match. Jordan Church, Lee Clough, no surprise there. They've only played one frame. Jordan, a very attacking player, but Lee is um, methodical. He's a very um, considered player. 
Chris is at it again now. Yeah, I can't see these yellows lasting very long, Nick. Jamie Graham, 10 each. Wow. Jamie Graham, yeah, I know. So from uh, 9, it it's was really definitely 9-3, maybe 9-2. I think it was yeah 9-3 for sure. What a comeback that is, and you've got to say, Incredible. big favourite. Yeah, mate, his head must be in the bin right now. Oh. Blimey. And I don't see too many people with, um, would have backed Jamie at 1 to 10, but it might have been, you know, because the bookies only taking a, um, doubles and upwards, they might have had a had one that they really fancied and put that in as a banker. Yeah, true. And they must have been really worried about it. 9-3 uh, down. Seb, I think Seb obviously broke these dry again, and that's I think that's been the stumbling block for Seb in this match. He's yeah. he's had three three or four dry breaks. Um, I'm not saying he would have been winning or anything, uh, but he could have been closer than he is. Yep. Certainly closer than it's going to be because it's going to be eight four after this, these next two shots. I think to beat people like Chris. Um, you know, the, the real top, top players, Chris Mellon, the Mick Hills, the Gareth Potters of the world, you have to do everything to the highest possible standard. You have to break well, you have to not miss, just to put them under any sort of pressure. Yeah, yeah. Because they don't. Toby Bonk currently 2-0 up against Mandeep Jinger. Uh, Mandeep um, just uh, from south of here down in the Gloucester area. Toby Bolt, you may be familiar with. He was uh, in action on TV on Monday night. He uh, he managed to beat uh, the current world champion, in Ben Davis. I haven't seen Ben here yet, but he's definitely in action. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's in the 5.30 section. Next game up on the stream table is another absolute mouth-watering session. My, uh, my partner in the commentary in the last match Rob Chilton is taking on the real number one, George Tierney. Yeah, George Tierney's, so that will be... Uh, George is currently lent over. We might be able to get a camera shot of that. George is currently lent over, shooting the breeze with Chris Melling, having a having a smile with each other. Yeah. He's a good character, isn't he? Yeah. Brings another another element to... Uh, he does. ...to the pool world. Well, it's a, another massive break from Chris. Balls have gone everywhere. Yeah, there you see George leaning over next to the Chris Melling TV sign. Was he looking for tips? Or yeah, I think he probably is. He's, he's giving Chris some. Uh, he, I, I would imagine knowing George, he's probably just telling telling Chris what shots to play. <laughs> he is, after all, the real number one. So there he is, the big fellow himself. The Sterling Hunter. Lovely chap, actually. I mean... Um, he gets some bad press for obvious reasons, but uh, he's a he's a absolutely smashing chap. So uh, Chris going to go reds here, and uh, again I, d I don't really see oh I don't see too many problems. Um, Worked out to be a handy little kiss that one. Yeah, providing it goes, which I think it does. Yeah. Pretty sure. <coughs> That's no good though. Didn't uh, get into that in the way he wanted. Trying to play it with a, a bit of reverse side just to ping off the cushion, but didn't really take. No, oh, and this is a really thin cut, red into the middle. But I think the two reds actually possibly plant into the left-hand middle. So he may, well, I don't know what he's going to do, actually. There's no telling with Chris. He's, he's probably one of the most inventive players in the game. He's up there as a, one of the best shot makers. Probably... Um, one of the uh, 
closest more contemporary or more slightly modern players would be someone like Simon Ward, I guess, for, for shot making. There's not many better than Chris. And I think uh, a lot of that comes just because um, he has to adapt all the time. You know, I mentioned earlier, much earlier, that uh, he's the only player ever to hold the pro card in uh, English 8-ball, 9-ball and snooker at the same time. So, um, you know, he's always adjusting to different tables and he has to be inventive. You learn, you know, those kind of things when you're, when you're playing games like uh, One Pocket and, um, and Banks and stuff like that, all those kind of different, yeah. different games. You learn your angles pretty quickly. Well, you mentioned about his inventiveness. He's going to need something pretty inventive to clear these up. He certainly is. Well, I wouldn't he's be backing against him. No. He's looking at a really tricky plant. And now he's just looking at the path that that red's going to take after he's, after he's made it. It's not just about the plant. I'd never question any Chris Melling clearance after the one he did uh, on, oh. the, on YouTube. Yeah, that was obscene. Yeah, that really was. That one went viral, didn't it? I think on, um, on Facebook it's had over a million views. I think Has it's it? ridiculous. Wow. Wasn't far away with that, you know, but it, hmm. he worked out the route of the two balls, but then forgot where the one, white one was going, where the cue ball was heading. So, Seb again, two visits. And obviously, this, the difference in uh, difference with black ball and with world rules is obviously, if it's a foul, you do get two shots in world rules, and uh, the objective is to try and keep those two shots for as long as you possibly can. Uh, to give yourself the best chance of clearing up. Whereas in Blackpool, you just get the one free shot and then one visit. Seb's just got to work out what's the uh, best way to clear these up now. Still got his uh, two shots. So he's just going to uh, tee this last yellow up with his. Uh, oh, unless. No, I'm sure he's still got two he's shots. He's still got two. Yeah. So we just look to tee this up. Well, that's nicely done. Yeah, played that well. Not always easy. You know you shouldn't make a noise of it, but sometimes you do. Yeah. Just having a concern. Look at that white ball. Really didn't need to do that. It almost looked like he was going to touch it with his hand for oh, a minute. Oh, goodness. Just didn't need to do that. And he was dangerously close, close to that corner bag. Giving it a real concern look. But he's pulled one back. There he is, just having a little laugh to himself. Well, either the Jamie Gray and Michael Still game hasn't been updated yet, or they're still locked together at ten apiece, and that is a grind. Mind you, Jamie doesn't mind a grind sometimes, does no, he? No, he doesn't, and he's bloody, he's very good at it. Mm. I think um, I'm not sure if uh, the scores are updating perfectly at the moment, but uh, we'll let you know as soon as we know on that match. Sanjay Patel currently five-two up against Daniel Bishop. He's a good stick, Sanjay. Been around for many, many years. He's um, um, ex um, ex practice partner of uh, Rob Chilton many years ago. Sanjay, Sanjay, Sanjay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. as I say, he plays uh, he plays around the Manchester area, and there's some obviously some some great curious around. There. He knows all the top players. Yeah, used to play with Selby, I think, when he was playing. I think for he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Sanjay off of the back of a, a long break. I think he's had about seven years away from the game. And his only reason for, for um, coming back to the game was to play in this series. Wow. Well, that's a, a same with a few of them, actually. I mean, we've got um, Carl Morris, ex-world champion, coming up in the next round. A lovely chap is Carl. I've not seen him yet today, but... Um, yeah, Carl, after a, a long break from the game, came back just to play in this series. Lee Clough in action. He's another one that's uh, off the back of a long break with some great success as well. We saw him in the um, final, I think it was, of, the, uh, of one of the events, one of the big events that we covered. Lee Clough. Lee Clough, yeah, that yeah. was at uh, Savannah's. It was, yeah. And um, he lost to Ben Davies. Ben Davies. Uh, yeah. Ben Davies yep. uh, from 7 nil up. I believe, if my memory is correct. Yeah, very good. Good memory. Wish mine was, was as sharp as that. The yes, that's STRN right. Open. It was in the STRN. So, yeah. And I know those boys will be watching, so um, good afternoon to you, gents. Zach and Will. Will they be popping down, do you think, at some point to have a look? Well, it wouldn't surprise me if they, uh, if they pop in over there, over the next couple. They love a bit, don't they? <laughs> Me too. Very funny, actually. I I, I watch them on um, Facebook, and uh, they rip each other to pieces. It's the, all the best of friends, but they yeah. absolutely rip each other to pieces. Very funny. Anyway, back with Seb, and uh, a really good opportunity here to come back within two frames, and and the pressure will be firmly on. We've seen some comebacks today. And pressure's going to be on Chris. There's a man who's, uh, who's used to withstanding pressure. Yeah. I think uh, Seb will elect to try and play a cannon now off this yellow to free up. Free up the black, which he's done. Yep. And uh, just needs to get good, good position on his last yellow. Which he's coming around to look at now. Make it as easy as he can to get back on the black. I think the key in this type of situation is to actually play for the area rather than trying to be too pinpoint yeah. because uh, sometimes you can you can mess it up, can't you? You know, at least give yourself a shot at it. Just looking at what angle he wants to leave himself, and this does seem a lot more natural playing it across this side. Yeah, he won't be overly happy with that. Because I think he can pop this and maybe use the red that's closest to the pocket as a yeah. blocker. Traffic to navigate, though. This, yeah. this could still go wrong. Yeah, could. He didn't want to be on the cushion, that's for sure. But don't sacrifice position for the pot. You've got to get the pot yep. and give yourself a chance. Oh, no, he's no. He forgot to pot it. was a big chance for Seb to uh, put a bit of pressure on Chris and uh, just let it go, unfortunately. So Chris um, is electing to play a snooker. That's, uh, I think, the first one we've seen in 13 frames. You can't blame him. Seb will be hitting this one at pace, yeah. He was in trouble, wasn't he? So yeah. Chris doing the right thing, making it easy as he possibly can, getting his two shots. And these are gone for 9-5. Yeah, and he's got options as well with the one on the rail. He can um, he can try and get into it now if he wants to. He can... Um, leave a double. Yeah, he can leave a double. He took your choice, Nick, and... Uh, yeah, well seen, mate. Right? Played that shot. really well. And these are gone. So 9-5 it's going to be. And yeah. uh, a long road back for Seb. Yeah. Long, nasty old road. I don't think he's going to be able to drive. 
quick virtual tour of the room. Well, Chris goes about his work. Michael Smout, 3-0 up against Zach Cooper. Lee Washbrook, 3-2 up against Ben Lewis. Arthur Dad, 2-1 up against, ben, uh, against Dan Davey. Sanjay Patel, 7-2 against, uh, against Daniel Bishop, showing what he's capable of. Sam Bircher, 3-1 against Leo Boomer. Mark Farnsworth and Mark Fleming were locked at two apiece. Mark Farnsworth is stretched out to a 4-2 lead. Sean Storey against Kevin George. Sean's currently 7-1 up. Jimmy Croxton against Chris, uh, Christy Colfield. Uh, Jimmy is 5-1 ahead. Lee Clough 2-1 up against... Uh, sorry, Jordan Church 2-1 up against Lee Clough. Toby Bolton, Mandeep Jing are tied at two apiece. John Rowe against Gareth Higgins. Three each. I think that's another world title there, isn't it, John Rowe? It is, yeah. Yeah, beat Lee Kendall, I believe, in the final. As I mentioned earlier, I was trying to count how many um, world, world titles are in this event. In fact, um, I got lost with it, so I asked Mike Day to have a go, and uh, I think he got a bit lost with it as well. So yeah, I think you're right. It's a bit difficult. And uh, Scott Gillespie made the journey down from Scotland, and uh, he's 4-3 up against Mark Asprey. And I just noticed that game has just disappeared, which means it's completed. So good to see. How did um, Jamie Graham fare? Oh, he lost. He did. He lost the decider. My goodness! After mounting that comeback, it's exactly the same that happened to nine three down. Came oh. back to ten all and lost the decider. He's going to be devastated. Exactly the same that happened to Carlo Donahue against oh. Sean Chipperfield in the last arena game. Wow. Wow. He'll be mortified yeah. after making that comeback. Such an amazing comeback, and then to that for that to happen. Mm. Meanwhile, Chris uh, still going about his business. Now, um, I think the the red in the way of the the path he'd like to take. So, screwing across the face of it, but uh, so he's just looking now at how he can navigate through these. A couple of problems there. It was just, I think it was just eyeing up a plant into the middle. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh no, he's playing the red into the middle direct. Lovely shot. Yep. He sees the uh, pattern so well, doesn't he? Just sees the route yeah. every time. Yeah, some, some players are, are uh, good at seeing those patterns. And then you get players at the top level who are not only good at seeing them, then they just execute them perfectly. Uh, that, that clearance, I imagine, was pretty much exactly how it played out in Chris's head when he was sitting at the table looking at what route he wanted to take around the table. And he's executed it superbly well. Yeah, and uh, that puts him... 10 frames to That's five. 10, 10 5 yeah yeah so he's on the hill and to be honest you know Seb's missed a couple and he's had a few dry breaks and that's pretty much all that's he's done wrong yeah the only difference so uh tough school a recognizable face that would have made the trip down from keely His opponent with the trademark cap, Seb Webb. Well, this match has been going about 40 minutes, I think. 45 minutes. Incredibly quick, isn't it? Blimey. And um, 
there's other matches that have only played three frames. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, crikey. <coughs> He's made a ball. Yeah, it's a good break. Reds look nice. Dan Davies won the next frame. He's now locked together at two apiece with our fun dad. Greg Lakin across on the other, one of the other stream tables. He's leading, sorry, he's trailing Gary Clark, four frames to three. So, uh, Seb just uh, taking the reds out nicely. I think he's, uh, yeah, he's fine. You see on that camera angle, he'll uh, just drop this red in dead weight, probably. Well, oh. he's left this black. Much more of a challenge than it needed to be. Yeah, 10 5 down, there's pressure on this. Yeah. yeah that's a great, that that's a great black. Lovely shot. Yeah. It, um, but in the way he played that, I mean, the, the, the previous shot, um, putting the one in the, the, the red in the middle, you felt that, um, you know, just dropping it in and he left an awkward angle on the next one. Um, it just, it almost felt like a, a bit of a concession, you know. Yeah. And his shoulders have gone down. Yeah, no fair play to him. He dug that black out nicely, yeah. didn't he? So he's he's not given up just yet. He he'll, he'll know in his mind that um, he'll be expecting Chris to probably break in dish or. But um, whilst you're still in the game, there's still hope. Anything can happen. Lee Washbrook, who I happen to have in the uh, sweepstake. Okay. Currently five-two up against uh, Ben Lewis. <coughs> My uh, my horse is two each with uh, Jordan Church. Yeah. Lee Klopp. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good bit of fun, that, isn't it? It's brilliant. I mean, Jimmy Croxton, crikey, he went for about 50p. I and know. Uh, yeah, it he's, was. he's an inform. he's one of the form players. He, yeah, this is his crazy. local club. It was like club. 200 quid or something, 150 was that? Was some it was some un crazy. Unbelievable buys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, two bob and a lollipop. The one, the one for me, and somebody who I really think could go deep in this. Um, and he went for six hundred quid, and that was um, Gareth Hibbert. Yeah. And the reason I say it is because um, Gareth plays World Rules week in week out. So the the, the rules. I mean, Gareth. Gareth is. Um, just an amazing attacking player anyway. The rules won't make any difference to him, but, mm. but he knows the rules if it goes inside that, out anyway. Yeah. So if the games so go that way, he knows. He could um, he could go deep in this, and for a player mm. that's, uh, I think, well, he was 25 to 1 with the bookies, but I reckon someone has had a little pop at him because I noticed overnight he went down to 20s. Yeah, someone knows. Uh, yeah, I think. Was um, it you? No, it wasn't me. It wasn't me, but I think I know who it was. I'm mentioning no names. But, uh, <laughs> I think I know somebody who was going to, have a little bet. Yeah, it wouldn't <coughs> be a bad shout, would it? Former world champion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great temperament. Lovely player to watch. So attacking. Really nice guy as well. Pe people see him and they see the, the, the kind of silver hair and they think, oh, here we go, you know. But he just gets on the table and <laughs> takes them apart. Yeah. Brilliant. So pleased when he won the world championship. I think he's, I think he's fabulous. One of my favourite players. Yeah, it's um, he's he's one of those that always seems to slip under the radar because yeah. of the way yeah. he he is. You know, he's very quiet, quietly mannered chap, mm. and, and uh, just goes about his business. So here we go. Chris is uh, looking to 
Uh, lock the doors on Seb now in this in this frame. Chance to win the match 11-6 if he can take these out. But we've mentioned all these other players, Greg. I mean, you're not flying under the radar too much yourself recently, are you? I mean, you're. No, this your, is uh, your game. Your game's gone to a to a different level. This is past me. I'll just. Uh, I'm happy to just be playing. Wow, well, goodness me! I mean, that uh, that final, that recent final. I know you probably won't want me to mention it just because of the result, but just getting there alone is uh, yeah. just an amazing effort. Yeah. Really brilliant. And of course, you are the you are the Pac Man on the PAC event. Uh, just last year was it the last event that they played yeah I think it was actually yeah, yeah so, beat seven so in the finals, you're, you're the reigning champion <laughs> you are you're defending your title basically yeah, yeah. yeah. thanks for the uh, thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> no I mean uh, this is a this is a massive step up I mean you've got all of the very best in the world but uh, you know I, I can play the game and I'm, I'm just uh, really looking forward to the challenge more yeah. than anything I'm not yeah. expecting too much but uh, who knows what can happen so yeah brilliant Hats off. And it was, uh, John McAllister talking about him. He was um, in action in the last round, so I don't know whether he... Yeah, well, I was playing... Uh, <coughs> I'm playing... I was playing him or uh, Dom Cooney, and Dom won 11-10. Uh, ah, it was Dom, that's right. Yeah, and I decider. think... Um, I know that Dom, according to Mike King, practices a lot with Phil Harrison, so... Uh, he obviously knows his way around the table, especially at World Rules as well. So that's uh, who you've got in the... That's who I played tonight. Second round. Yeah, that's it, Is yeah. It? Yeah. Because I had a buy in my first round because uh, Joe Prince, who I was meant to play, didn't turn up. Oh, right. Yeah. So, oh, right. Yeah. Do we know why? Hopefully he's okay. Um, I've no idea. No. I just uh, obviously saw it on on, uh, yeah. Yeah. on the website. Well, we wish you well. Hopefully you're yeah. okay. So, yeah, I was expecting an incredibly tough match uh, with either player. I know how good Dom is. and uh, Yeah. And he's obviously just beaten a very informed player in John. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, I'll have to play extremely well to have a chance. Look at that. Super black. Look at the position. Oh. I mean, not that, just, that was not a tough, just a, uh, really, really tough shot. And he just, like, it was over the hole. Yeah. Great pot. And this is... It's been flawless. Yeah. Absolutely flawless. Really has. He just wants to screw the cue all back to exactly where it is now. Now he's decided just to punch the yellow and take it into the opposite. Quite rightly so. Well, that's a, a master class of pull there from, from Chris Melling. Um, hats off to Seb Webb, or not hats off as the, as the case may be. Um, he put up a good showing. Um, real good attacking stuff early doors, but uh, it's, it's Chris that goes through into... Uh, in, into the winner's side. We don't say goodbye to Seb yet. He drops across into the loser's side. It is double elimination. So um, that's all good stuff. And the next game on the stream table, maybe, um, I don't think it's due to start till 5.30. So it might be a little break now of about half an hour. So that's, that's probably good timing. It's tea time after all. So um, go get yourself a, um, a nice cold beer and a, and, a, and a plate of food. And we will be back with you with um, the small affair of Rob Chilton against uh, George Tierney. Wow. Um, it's, yeah, I know. Great stuff. And talking about Gareth Hibbert, he's just walked in the arena with his uh, good lady, Viv Rusko. Yeah. So, uh, well, what a match that promises to be. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it should be an absolute cracker. Yeah. Really looking forward to that. And um, thanks very much, Greg. Thanks yeah, for your thank time. You, it's been a, been a pleasure commentating with you, as always. And, and you. Hopefully, we'll get together again over the weekend. You yeah. Spare us a bit more time. I'll, I'll speak to you later. If I lose, you'll not see me, but brilliant thanks a lot mate so we'll see you all again very very soon thanks to greg again and um yeah we'll be back i'm not sure if they're going to go to the studio i think they might be so stick around for a couple minutes and uh there may well be an interview in the studio with uh, with mr melling so they'll cut across to them in, in just a few moments thank you very much